As a defender, leading to the first trick is a valuable opportunity, both to set about developing your strategy for the hand and to give your partner useful information. So it's important to get off to a good start by choosing the right card. Your choice of opening lead depends on the type of contract that you're facing. We'll look at no trump contracts first of all. You know that long suits are a real asset in no trumps, and your opening lead should be geared towards setting up your long suits before Declarer can set up theirs. So here you want to lead Hearts, your longest suit. But which card? Do you lead a big card or a small one? Well, if you have touching high cards in your long suit, the convention is to lead the top one of those cards. This tells your partner two things. Firstly, that you hold the card directly beneath the one you have led, and you don't hold the one above it. So, as well as starting to set up your long suit and telling your partner which suit that is, you're also telling them more about the cards that you hold. Here, your lead of the queen says that hearts is the suit you want to develop, that you have the jack, and maybe also the ten, and that you don't have the king. Your partner can often, as in this example, use this information to assume where certain high cards are. Here, they know the King of Hearts can only be in your hand or declarers, and your lead tells them that you don't have the King. You might also have a higher, non-touching card, as it's standard to lead the top of what is called an internal sequence. So here, you would lead the 10, the top of the 1098 internal sequence. Partner will know that you have the 9 and you don't have the Jack, but they won't know yet that you also have the King. Before we move on, let's just look at why we only lead Honours if we hold the one beneath. We all love taking tricks and we know our Aces can do that most of the time, but if you lead an Ace when you don't have the King, you can just be gifting tricks to your opponents. Let's look at what happens here. If you decide to start the hand by winning a trick and play the Ace of Clubs, the other three players will all play small cards and you will, indeed, win that trick. But look at that King of Clubs in Declarer's hand. That has now been converted into a winner. What would have happened if you'd waited for your partner or Declarer to lead Clubs instead? Well, Declarer can never make a trick with that King. When Clubs are led, if Declarer plays a small one, you will win the trick with a smaller club and still have the ace in hand to capture their king on a later round. If they play the king, you win with the ace, and this means partner's queen is now also a winner, and declarer can never make a club trick. Any time you lead the ace and the king is in declarer's hand, you have given them a trick that they weren't going to make otherwise. So leading an unsupported ace, which is what we call an ace without the king, always risks this happening, and is therefore a bad idea. The same is true if you hold other unsupported honour cards. If Declarer has the card under your top honour, in this case the Queen, you can trap it just like we saw in the video on finessing, but only if you wait and make them play that card before you part with the one that beats it. What if you don't have touching honour cards at the top of your long suit? Then you lead a smaller card, specifically the fourth highest card of your longest suit. The reason why you lead the fourth highest card is because of a useful gadget that can help your partner work out what kind of holding you have in that suit. It's called the Rule of Eleven, and we won't go into it here, but you should head to the Hints and Tips section for this module on our website to read up on how it works, as it's a powerful tool in a defender's armoury. For now, just remember that in No Trumps, if you don't have touching honours in your long suit, lead your fourth highest card in that suit. Also, when we move on to bidding in the next module and you start to play the full version of the game, there may be times where you don't start with a lead of your longest suit against a No Trump contract. You might want to lead a suit that your partner has bid, for example. For now though, leading your longest suit is going to be your best bet most of the time. Now let's think about trump contracts. Again, when choosing your opening lead, it pays to think about where your tricks will be coming from. 
If you have a singleton suit, you might well make tricks by roughing that suit, as we saw in Module 3, so you should usually lead that card. This is an especially good plan if you have two or three small trumps that are no good for winning tricks in their own right. Your partner will often be able to recognise your lead as a singleton. In this example, ten of the clubs are visible between the east hand, dummy, and your lead, so your partner should recognise that you are likely to be short in clubs. You might still hope to get a rough if you have only two cards in a suit, a doubleton. The way to tell partner that this is what you have is to lead the higher of the two cards on the first trick, and then play the lower one as soon as you can. Here, your lead of the jack of clubs gives your partner plenty of information, as they hold the ten so they know your jack is not the top of an honour sequence, and therefore may well be from a singleton or a doubleton. They should lead back a club at the first opportunity, and when you respond with a smaller club than the jack, partner now knows that you are able to rough the next time that suit is led. Sometimes there is just no clear lead to choose. Here, you don't have an honour sequence, singleton or doubleton. In no trumps, you would just lead the fourth highest card of your longest suit, and some players also use this convention against trump contracts. Partnerships have different agreements, but for now, we suggest that you use what we call attitude leads. So, lead your smallest card if you have a good suit, and lead a higher non-honour card if you don't have any real interest in the suit. For example, here you would lead the Two of Hearts, a small card, suggesting that you want partner to play hearts back when they get the chance. Here's another hand where you have no obvious good lead. You don't want to lead clubs because your ace is unsupported, and leading a small card would also give Declarer a trick if they have the king. You would also be at high risk of helping Declarer if you led from your diamond holding, and you don't want to lead your singleton trump in case it helps Declara by forcing partner to play a high trump. So that just leaves hearts. You don't want partner to lead this suit back, you would much prefer a diamond for example, so you tell them you don't like hearts by playing a higher non-honour, or spot card, in this case the nine. It's useful to be able to tell partner whether you want them to lead back the suit you have led in this way, and this does not just apply to the opening lead. You can carry on doing this each time you lead a new suit throughout the hand. With experience, you'll see how you can often work out partners holding in the suit they lead straight away. Sometimes the clues you get from the opening lead are not conclusive. You'll often have to wait until the second round of the suit before you know for sure. But that's the fun of bridge. Always solving the puzzles, and always getting more clues. Once you start using bidding, and we are nearly there, there are more strategies you can use when you are leading based on what you know about the hands. But for now, following these guidelines will serve you well and help your partner. Take the quiz on the website to see how well you remember them, and make sure to check out the hints and tips section too.